Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Krause from Kane Elementary. Good to see you again. We're back for another field trip. Where are we headed today, Mr. McCauley? Hi students, today we'll be going to one of my favorite places in Bartlesville, Woolrock. Oh my gosh, I love Woolrock, especially the buffalo. I try to count them as we drive into the museum. Okay, don't forget boys and girls, after we take the tour, we'll meet back here and we'll have our discussion questions. See you soon. Hey, what a great surprise to come out here and see you guys today. Welcome to Woolarock. How many of you all been here before? Raise your hand if you have been. You know, the thing that I love the most about this place is that you can come here hundreds of times and you'll find something different every time you come to Woolarock. We call it the magic of Woolarock. Let's go inside and see if we can find some of that magic. You know, one of the great things about Willowrock is the incredible collection of art and artifacts that we have here. People ask me all the time, what's your favorite painting? Well, that's impossible. That's like asking me, who's your favorite grandchild? I will not even try to give you that answer. But one example of one of our great paintings is right behind me. This is called the Navajo Fire Dance. It was by an artist by the name of William Lee. And we're blessed by the fact that we have six Lees of these gigantic panoramic paintings that he did for Mr. Phillips. Speaking of Mr. Phillips, I act like you all know exactly who I'm talking about. Some of you might not. Frank Phillips started Phillips Petroleum Company way back in the early 1900s. In 1925, he came here and built his lodge home. And after being there for about three years, he came up the hill and he built a room up here. And that's where he started his museum. It started off as a one-room museum. Today it's 50,000 square feet with an art collection that is considered one of the finest Southwest art collections in the world. So I'm glad you're here. We got so much to look at. Let's go this way. I want to show you something that's really cool. Hey, you've now come to room three here at the Woolarock Museum. It is full of so many incredible things. The bronze of Sacagawea, the beautiful Indian blankets that are up here. And one thing that is a staple, a really important part of this room that children enjoy, adults enjoy, is the fabulous Crow Indian dance. Every once in a while we can get lucky and this thing will come to life. And so we'll give it a shot and see if, if we can get lucky this morning. Perfect, it's your lucky day, things are working. Crow Indian dance. It's a neat, neat part of what we have here at the museum. I got more neat stuff to show you. Don't leave me now. Come on, let's keep going. Remember earlier I told you about the William Lee painting up uh, in room three. Um, this is another William Lee painting behind me. It's probably one of the best known pieces of art that we have here at Willowrock because it tells an incredible story within this image. You know, so many times I try to tell people that you look at a beautiful painting and there's so much more there than just color and paint. There is a story to be told. And this painting tells a very, very good story. This shows the old Indian chief. And the Indian chief is remembering back in the old times, the, the times when life was better for, for not only him, but for the American Indian. He is wearing white man's clothing and Indian clothing. He has one foot in the furrow and one foot out. He's got the horses in front of him, the skull of the buffalo to his left. And if you look up in the clouds, you see he's remembering the old buffalo hunts of the day when things were much, much different for the Native American. So there's a beautiful story that's being told there. It's a sad story, but it's one to remember and Lee did a very, very good job of it. Remember I told you earlier that Mr. Phillips started Willowrock back in 1925. Well, in 1927, some of you may have heard of Dole Pineapple. Some of you maybe have eaten Dole Pineapple. Well, the Dole Pineapple Company came up with an idea of they wanted to have a race. For the first time, airplanes would fly from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii. It had never been done before. That was in 1927. 
there was a pilot by the name of Art Goebbels. And Mr. Goebbels had a plane that he wanted to enter in that race. He just didn't have the money to do it. So he approached Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips sponsored that plane and that plane won the race, Dole Pineapple Race. And after winning it, it came back here to the museum. At that time, there was no museum. And so Mr. Phillips told his crew, go up there on the hillside and build me a hangar. And so they built a hangar out of stone and this airplane went inside it. Well, that hangar is now the first room of the museum. And that's how the museum actually got started. So behind me is that airplane. That airplane flew from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii. It took 27 hours for that plane to make it. The pilot sat in that window right there. Behind him was a navigator. They couldn't talk to each other. They couldn't see each other. The only way they communicated was they had a string and they would tie notes to it and send them back and forth to each other. So if you can imagine 27 hours in an airplane flying to a little dot island, that's what these people did. It was a true act of courage. And that plane will always be a symbol of that race and of the birth of this museum. Let's go downstairs and see something else. Animals are such an important part of our story here at Willowrock. For those of you all that have been here before, what's your, what's your favorite animal here at Willowrock? I know most people will say buffalo, and they're pretty cool. Mr. Phillips brought that buffalo herd here in 1926. Think about that. Buffalo were almost extinct, so Mr. Phillips was really one of the very first to really conserve and protect a species of animal like the buffalo. And in our herd now, we have about 135, 140 buffalo. We have elk, we have deer. Gosh, we have lots of deer. If you've driven through here, you see them all over the place. We have longhorn cattle, elk, we've got uh, zebra. We have Scotch Highland cattle. Fortunately, we do not have grizzly bears, and that's a good thing. One great thing about Woolarock is that we have an animal barn that allows us to get close and personal with some of the little small animals. Now, we don't want you to pet the buffalo and we don't want you to pet the elk. Uh, that would not be a smart thing to try to do. But in our petting barn, we have got rabbits, we've got small cattle, we've got, uh, from time to time, we've had a baby bison and we've had uh, a baby longhorn. So it just sort of depends. It kind of, the animals come and go, but it gives you an opportunity to, to see the babies and it's pretty neat. It's a great experience to have. So when you come out here and you're driving through, see how many animals you can see on the drive. And then once you've come to the museum and visited the lodge, make sure you make it down there to the petting barn and take a look and see what we got. Let's go down here now. Hey, welcome. You're inside the lodge and I'm glad you're able to join me for a little bit of music. Sing along if you'd like. This is fabulous time. You know, I'm really glad that you had the, oops, small mistake on my part. Welcome to the lodge. This is the most unique home in the world, in my opinion. There is so many neat stories, fabulous stories that are inside these walls. I wish, I mean, I could spend hours telling them to you, but I'm going to try to narrow it down to just a few. But over my shoulder, you'll see a lion. That lion was given to Mr. Phillips by the Ringling Brothers Circus. He was alive. They just retired him from the circus, and he lived out here on the ranch for a couple of years before he passed away from old age. Above him is the elephant. Mr. Phillips won the circus from Mr. Ringling, in a poker game, and he lost it back to Mr. Ringling in a poker game. And a few months later, we got a great big box here at the ranch. We opened it up, and there was a card on it, and it said, this is a reminder that for one day, you owned my circus. And inside that box was that elephant head. So Mr. Phillips put it up there to remind himself that he used to own that circus, even for a short amount of time. But my favorite story here at the lodge is that back in the 1930s, so we're talking 85, 90 years ago, Mr. Phillips had a big party and lots of people were here and he hired a man by the name of Harry Blackstone, 
who was a famous magician back in those days. And he entertained the guests with different tricks and cards. And the evening was coming to a close and Mr. Phillips asked Blackstone to perform one more trick. He agreed to do that. He was standing right about where I am. He called Mrs. Phillips up and she came up and he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a brand new deck of cards that had never been opened before. He unwrapped them, took the cards out, shuffled them and shuffled them, fanned them out to Mrs. Phillips and said, draw a card, and she did. And he said, show the crowd, and she did. It was the queen of spades. And he said, now put the card back in the deck. She did, and he shuffled them and shuffled them and shuffled them, and then he spun around and threw that deck of cards against the wall. And her card, the queen of spades, stuck right there. And it remains there today. That, my friends, is the magic of Willowrock. Cool stuff, huh? This house has nine bedrooms. Every bedroom has a bath because they entertained a lot of people here. They had presidents, they had movie stars, they had sports stars, business leaders. They were from all parts of the world came here and stayed at the lodge at Willowrock. The walls are covered with animals. Mr. Phillips was not a hunter. Most of these animals lived here on the ranch and died of natural causes, and he would then have them mounted and put on his lodge walls. So it's just, it's an incredible place. And next time you come to Willowrock, which I hope is soon, you make sure you come down here to the lodge and take a look at this place because this is a major part of the magic of this place. I am so glad that you all came by to see us today at Willowrock. It has made my day special for sure. I thought we'd close it out with um, a little book that I think is, is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's called Till the Cows Come Home, and it's about another family that lives on a ranch. And uh, it's been written by, you probably know her, Jody Isnuggle. Uh, but uh, it's a great little book. I thought we'd go ahead and read it uh, if you got a minute. There was once a young cowboy who owned a ranch. He trailed his cows to the mountains in the spring and to the river in the winter. In between his ranching chores, he made saddles and bridles and all sorts of riggins. Wranglers from miles around thought his leather pounding was finer than frog's hair. In appreciation of the cowboy's talent, an old cowpuncher gave him a flawless piece of leather. It was smooth as silk, yet tough as a tornado. The cowboy patted the leather gently every day. At night, he stared at the soft cocoa-colored material and pictured a pair of chaps that would knock off your 10-gallon hat. He measured. Yee-haw! He had just enough to make himself those chaps. Whistling, he cut out the pieces and stitched them together. First thing the next morning, he took a quick stroll to check on the feel of them. He wore those whoop de yo chaps everywhere when he checked heifers, when he roped doggies for branding, and when he rode his favorite horse. I'll wear these chaps till the cows come home, said the cowboy to the horse. After many rides through belly-high grass, a hole wore in the bottom of one leg of his chaps. Feeling flatter than a prairie pancake, the cowboy took them off. He inspected the chaps. He had enough leather for a trailblazing vest. He hummed as he stitched it. He wore that vest everywhere. When he sawed his fiddle strings, when he pitched hay to the bulls, and when he dressed up for a two-steppin' shindig. I'll wear this vest till the cows come home, said the cowboy to his partners. After many a hoedown, the vest looked drab. Feeling hornswoggled, the cowboy took off the vest and began to fold it up. He discovered he could make himself a rootin' tootin' pair of gloves. He was sporting his gloves just in time for a change in the weather. He wore those gloves everywhere, to fix fence, to muck out stalls, and to go a-courtin' to see Sally Mae. I'll wear these gloves till the cows come home, said the cowboy to his sweetheart. After many dates with Sally Mae, his highfalutin' gloves weren't so high any longer. Two of his fingers poked through the ends, yet he still had enough leather to make himself a rip-snortin' hat band. With two whoops and a holler, he patched together a hat band. He tied that hat band on his hat and wore it everywhere to wrestle steers and rodeos, 
to shield his face from rain and sun, and to marry Sally May. After many rain-soaked and sun-baked days with Sally May, his handsome hat band appeared old and frazzled. He slipped it off his hat and held it in his hands. He couldn't possibly save it now, could he? He needed a button for his jeans. He pieced together a Jim Dandy button from the hat band and sewed it on his jeans. He wore those jeans with his new button everywhere. He wore them when he bailed hay, he wore them when he broke his new horse, and he wore them when he held his baby girl for the first time. I'll wear this button till the cows come home, cooed the cowboy to his daughter. After many rides with his daughter, the button fell off. The cowboy searched but feared the button had fallen in the muddy corral. Now this cowboy knew he couldn't make a new leather anything out of thin air. So he placed his daughter on his old horse and climbed into the saddle with her. As he told her the story of his flawless piece of leather, these two buckaroos rode to the pasture and brought the cows home. That's terrific, that's a great book. Again, thanks so much for coming out to see us at Willow Rock today. And remember, we got Kids Fest coming the last part of June. And then in July, we've got Camp Willow Rock. Both of those are terrific times to come out here. But let's be honest, any time is a great time to come to Willow Rock. We hope we'll see you soon. Oh, that was such a great story. That Bob Fraser, he's such a character. I could literally listen to him all day. So tell me, Mr. McCauley, what was your favorite part of the tour? Well, there's, there's a lot to love at Willow Rock, but I think what I appreciate the most is that the animals have a free place to roam. So it really serves as a sanctuary or preserve for them. So question, why do you think it's important to have a preserve like Willow Rock? You know, one of the things that's always fascinated me about Willow Rock was the actual name Willow Rock. Do you know how it got its name? Do you know why it has the name Willow Rock? Think about that for a second, boys and girls. Okay, wait, I'll give you a hint. It's the combination of three little words. We also learned that Willow Rock was originally the country home for Frank and Jane Phillips, who was the founder of Phillips 66. The company made them both lots of money, and the couple was famous for donating lots of, those, lots of their money to projects and people here in town. So a couple of questions. One, what would you do if you had a lot of money? Are there people you'd like to help? I love that question. I think it's important that we all figure out ways that we can help other people. That, that's just remarkable, the things that they did. Okay, boys and girls, next question. So Mr. Frazier read us a book about the cowboy. Remember the cowboy? He was given um, a gift, a piece of leather at the very beginning of the story. And as the story went on, the leather became smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it was just a button. So he used that gift over and over again to help people. So if you think about it, what's some ways that we could help use some of our resources to re-gift over and over to help our wildlife or, or things like Wooler Rock? Something that comes to my mind is a simple bird feeder. Could you make something at your house that you could put in your yard that would help the wildlife? That's what I thought of. Ms. Kraus, this trip to Willow Rock was really fun today. I love going on these trips with our kids. Oh, me too. And I appreciate that you are going with us on these trips. I know I roped you into this, but thanks, <laughs> Mr. McCauley. Boys and girls, we'll see you soon.